the meeting for March 4th, 2015. Agenda meeting. Ordinances on second reading, 501. Ordinance to amend supplement to revise general ordinance of the City of New Brunswick, Chapter 10. Vehicles and traffic schedule 39. Parking zone for handicapped persons. Add two handicapped parking zones and delete two handicapped parking zones. 502. In order to amend a supplement to revise general ordinance of the City of New Brunswick, Chapter 10. Vehicles and traffic schedule 38. Time limit parking areas. Add two time limit parking areas on Van Dyke Avenue. 503. Amend the salary ordinance. <laughs> ordinances for discussion. I'm sorry, ordinance for discussion. The first reading, 501. Ordinance to amend the supplement to revise general ordinance of the city of New Chapter 10. Vehicles and traffic schedules 19 regulation. Closing street where schools are located. Delete current schedule 19 and replace it with revised schedule 19. Resolutions, 501, approve agenda minutes. 502, approve payroll. 503, authorize refund for review tax sales. 504, authorize refund of fire safety inspection fee. 505, authorize application, acceptance, and execution of grant agreements for 2015 New Jersey Department of Law and Public Safety, Division of Highway Traffic Safety. For 2015, distracted driving crackdown, a map is 5,000. 506, approve amendment of resolution 111 414, reason to pay additional legal fees in the amount of 29.62.50. Anthony B. Vignolo, Esquire, of Boris Holden Foley, Vignolo, Hyman, and Stahl, for special counsel for board ethics hearing from 2850 to 5812 507, approved request for use of city property requested by Tree of Life Church for religious service. Location, War Memorial Park, date Saturday, June 20, 2015, and Saturday, August 22, 2015. Rain dates. Sunday, June 21st, 2015. Sunday, August 23rd, 2015. The location is Feaster Park. Date, January 25th, 2015. Rain date, Sunday, July 26th, 2015. Time is 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. 508, approved request for use of city property. Requested by Center for International Faculty and Student Services, Rutgers University. The location is Beaver Road Park, Pavilion, and adjacent lawn area. The student picnic given by International Student Organization at Rutgers University. The date is Monday, August 24, 2015. The time is 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. 509, approved amendment of counsel. James F. Clarkin, 3rd Esquire, for special counsel for board ethics here, and not to exceed 4,000. 510, approved emergency temporary appropriations for 2015. 511, approved amendment of resolution R021544, reason change certificate of funds account number for the fire department. Approval work contract with Sal Electric Co. Incorporated for electrical maintenance and repair services. Term is 12 month period commencing February 19, 2015, ending February 18, 2016, which can be extended on a yearly basis for up to two additional years. Rebid specification 415 14 PR, not to exceed 48,500. 512, authorized purchase by the police department. Detective, you are under. PEPPN 2015 Pennsylvania Education Courtesy Management Program R021457 from Superior Office Systems Incorporated. For one, new county image, runner advance for 2555 doctor seasons. Doctor received 5649. <coughs> Five thirteen approved authorization authorization to rebid re requested by water department for maintenance and support services for the Memcore membrane filtration system rebid specification number four two five dash fifteen RFP five fourteen approval water contract with Orchard Holdings LLC for solar powered remote equipment maintenance term two year contract 2015-2016, specification number three seven two God bless you. Dash 14, not to exceed 47,600, 515, approved request for use of city property. Requested by Refuge Christian Church Incorporated, locations, Boyd Park. For fair with music, games, face painting, and, and local organizations awareness. The date is Saturday, July 18, 2015. The rate date is Saturday, July 25, 2015. Time is 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. 516, authorized lease of copy machine for division of inspections. GE Capital Information Tech Solutions doing business as RICO USA. For one RICO model, 3554 SP digital copy system. Not to exceed 128 per month, commencing April 1st, 2015, ending March 31st, 2019. 31st, 2019. 48-month contract, state contract, number A, 82709M0053, New Jersey cost per copy. 
517, authorized purchase by the police department, crime prevention under state contract A, 86922, from Deertrip Fleet Services Incorporated for one 2015 Dodge Journey, not to exceed 17,999. 518, approve amendment of resolution R, 021506, reason additional amount of $84 for the police department with specialty graphics, LLC, furnish and deliver work uniform for six departments, Specification number 319-14P, not to exceed $84. Approval of this change order will not constitute an increase of 20% or more of the original contract. 519, approved transfer of appropriation reserve for 2014 municipal budget. 520, approved resolution of authorization to execute the property act access and use agreement between the City of New Brunswick and Catholic Charities Diocese of Touching for community garden properties. 521, Authorized submission of recycling tonnage grant application for 2014. 522. Authorized certification of, is that right, the date 2014? Yes. 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 522. Authorized certification of amount paid for recycling enhancement act. 2014 tax reimbursement. The amount is 64 $3 per ton paid on 18,053.07 tons of solid waste. 523. Approved payment for emergency procurement, Department of Public Works, for immediate delivery of 50 tons sand salt mix for the Department of Public Works with KLK Trucking Company Incorporated, not to exceed 6,083 The purchase order number is D77762. 524, approved request for use of city property requested by Elias Province. The location is Buglo Park and Pavilion. For Turkey Trot, 3K Walk, 5K Run to benefit the soup kitchen. Sunday, November 1st, 2015. Time is 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. 525. Award professional service agreement to Delaware Rider and Engineering Incorporated for conflict engineering for review of site plans and subdivisions. Engineering review term. January 1st, 2015, December 31st, 2015. Fair and open. 526. Award professional service agreement to Bignell, Bignell Planning Consultants Incorporated for review of site plans and subdivisions. Planning review term. January 1, 2015, December 31st, 2015. Fair and open. 527, approved off-premise raffle at 222 Livingston Avenue for Ants, Ants, and Ants Memorial Temple, date May 15, May 5, 2015. 528, approved authorization to advertise for Nielsen Street Roadway and sidewalk repairs to specification number 883-15. Five twenty nine approved authorization to advertise for Handy Street Storm Sore Improvement specification number eight eight two dash fifteen five thirty approved payment for emergency procurement water utility for water main break repair at all location of Commercial Avenue between Nielsen Street and George Street with B and W Construction in New Jersey not to exceed fourteen thousand four fourteen thousand forty six eighty five purchase order D seven six eight one four five three one approved payment for emergency procurement water utility. For repair a broken 30 inch raw water main on Sedan Street with BW Construction, New Jersey, not to exceed 51,527.57. Purchase order number D76961532. Approved amendment of resolution R011586. The reason is add additional days due to inclement weather. Approved relaxing of city noise orders requested by 70 pounds out of the LLC. The LLC. Complete work at Rutgers Hillel Student Center. Dates of Saturday, March 7, 4, 21, 28, 2015, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., 533. Approved relaxation of the city noise ordinance requested by Public Service Electric Gas Company. Reason is to install a conduit for Rockwell Johnson University Hospital on Patrick Street between Kirkpatrick Street and Spring Street. Date is Saturday and Sunday, March 7 and 8, 2015, and March 14 and 15, 2015. Alternate dates, Saturday and Sunday, March 21st, 22nd, 2015. The time is 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. 534 is held at the request of the engineer. 535 held at the request of the engineer. 536, approval resolution for authorization to enter into an agreement with Cooperative Tech LLC for e waste recycling. The term is March 5, 2015, and then December 31st, 2015. With option to renew for 2016. 537, authorized reimbursement from Keaton Development Company for the purchase and installation of one five ton commercial grade split air conditioning unit. For the server room in the police department, not to exceed 21,442. 538, approved amendment of resolution 021560, change order number 1 J with Hamilton Street 
Incorporated, doing business as Flooring Central for Revson Avenue Fire Museum and Community Center. The amount is $500. Approval of this change order will not constitute an increase of 20% or more of the original contract. 539, authorized release of site performance guarantee, irre, irre, irrevocable letter of irrevocable, that's the word, irrevocable letter of credit number 2013-029, the amount of 94044 and site inspection fees in the amount of 1,068 to 315 Sedan Street, LLC, for 309 Sedan Street, Block 163, Block 22.01, 540, approved relaxation of city noise ordinance, requested by Town Clock Community Development Corporation, region is to maintain the construction schedule at 9 Baird Street, Block 9, Lot 21, First Reformed Church, the dates of Saturday, March 7, 2015, through June 6, 2015. Time is 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. No items to be discussed by the council. It's time to call the meeting to order. First of all, roll. Council Member Anderson. Here. Council Member Escobar. Here. Council Vice President Fleming. Here. Council Member Garlotti. Present. Council President Egan. Here. Please be advised that the notice requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act have been complied with and satisfied without the annual notice, which gave sufficient notice of time and place and conduct of all public meetings of the Municipal Council of the City of New Brunswick has been filed with the City Clerk, has been placed on an appropriate bulletin board in the lobby of the City Hall of New Brunswick, New Jersey, and has been transmitted to the official newspaper of the City of New Brunswick, namely the Home News Tribune. Please stand for the Pleasure to meet you. Silence for our men and women serving our armed forces overseas, and for all our men and women in the armed forces who have lost their lives in battle. Thank you. We have minutes from January 21st and also February 4th. Can I get a motion to accept the minutes? Motion. Second. Council Member Anderson. Yes. Council Member Escobar. Yes. Council Vice President Fleming. Yes. Council Member Garlotti. Aye. Council President Egan. <coughs> yes. We have Ordinance 501, an ordinance to amend supplement and revise general ordinance of the City of Brunswick, Chapter 10, Vehicles and Traffic, Schedule 39, Parking Zones for Handicapped Persons. Add two handicapped parking zones and delete two handicapped parking zones. Would anybody like to comment on this ordinance? Anyone? Seeing none? Move the ordinance. Second. Council Member Anderson. Yes. Council Member Escobar. Yes. Council Vice President Fleming. Yes. Council Member Garlotti. Aye. Council President Egan. Yes. 502, ordinance to amend the supplement and revise general ordinance of the City of New Brunswick, Chapter 10, Vehicles and Traffic, Schedule 38. Time limit parking areas. Add two time limit parking areas on Van Dyke Avenue. Would anybody from the public like to comment on this ordinance? Yes, sir. Mr. Good evening. Um, Charles Cradle, New Brunswick. Can you just tell me the purpose of, of changing the parking on Van Dyke Avenue? Mr. Sheehan, can anybody help me with that? Tom, do you have Mr. a... Mr. Wolden? I do not know. Okay. I'm, um, I'm sorry, I don't have the backup for that. I thought it was routine from the Traffic Commission or the Parking Authority, but... Can I get you an explanation tomorrow? Well, I, I don't think it would be appropriate for the council to vote on it without knowing what the purpose is. I, I can say I was at the last traffic commission meeting. I don't recall anything about this. It's the first I'm seeing of it. I apologize. I, I don't have the backup on it. Again, I thought it was uh, relatively routine. Matter, but what would you like us to do, Mr. Brown? Respectfully, I'd ask that you hold this, uh, hold this ordinance until we can okay. learn what its purpose is. That's what we'll do then. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. We need a motion, I'm sorry. <coughs> I have a motion at least to hold this until we carry to the next meeting. Carry to the next meeting, please, from one of the council members. Second. 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 
Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council Member Garlotti? No. Council President Egan? Yes. We have uh, Ordinance 503, amend the management and salary ordinance. Would anybody like to comment on that ordinance? Good evening once again, Charles Cranville New Brunswick. If I could ask uh, what's the purpose of changing the ordinance, uh, who is going to get a raise, and who is going to, if anybody's going to get less money. Mr. Lockman? The uh, ordinance doesn't guarantee what uh, anyone will get will get paid. Um, it just establishes the ranges by which uh, their salary can be uh, established by the mayor for three years, 2015, 2016, 2017. Uh, we're also, um, uh, the ordinance also changes the ranges for certain titles. Uh, we are also codifying titles that you had approved in 2014 by individual ordinance. Those, um, those titles are now being um, added to the master um, salary ordinance, if you will. The, uh, again, the, uh, the ordinance establishes ranges by which uh, people can be paid. It does not establish what they are to be paid. That is a function of, uh, um, that is a decision the mayor makes uh, on an annual basis. Thank you. Thank you. Can you tell me uh, what ranges are being increased and why? We, um, we altered the director of law title. We um, uh, are expecting the new law director to put uh, additional hours in that uh, um, more so than the previous law director was asked to, to work. Um, we have added a, um, uh, again, a title community organization specialist. That is a title we approved last year. Um, in 16 and 17, the ranges increase slightly uh, to allow for increases if that if the mayor so desires. Thank you, Mr. Lott. Yes, sir. So I see this list of, of ranges be S01, SO2, 84, 86, 88, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98. Uh, is that all of the ranges that exist, or are some ranges being increased and others not? They are all the ranges that exist for management titles. Uh, and um, in 15, uh, many of the titles do not, uh, many of the ranges do not change at all. Uh, but again, as I said, in 16 and 17, they uh, are increased slightly in the event the mayor chooses to pass on management increases to his staff. Thank you. Thank you. And can you just tell me when you say slightly? Approximately less, less than two percent. I think they just used one percent as a guide, but uh, less than two percent. Okay. Thank you very much. Seeing nobody else, can somebody move the ordinance? So moved. Second. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan? Yes. 501 on first reading. New Supplement the revised general ordinance of the city of Brunswick, chapter 10, vehicles and traffic schedule 19. The regulations closing streets where schools are located. Delete current schedule 19 and replace it with revised schedule 19. Move the ordinance. This is the setting down March 18th for public hearing, same day to be advertised. Thank you. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council Member Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan? Yes. We have resolutions. We have resolutions 501 through 540, with 534 and 535 being held at the request of the engineer. Would anybody from the public like to comment on any of the resolutions this evening? Resolutions. Anybody from the public? Um, soy miembro de los jardines comunitarios de aquí de New Brunswick. Uh, good evening, this is Lina Ortega. She's a member of the community gardens at Unity Square here in New Brunswick. My name is Amanda Glear at Community Square, and I'll be trying to answer. Um, estoy muy contenta de, de estar aquí y de ver que la solución que han buscado para estos jardines. Um, so I'm very happy to be here and to see that you're passing the resolution for the garden. Um, ya que tengo niños y veo que es muy importante para poder enseñarle a ellos cómo um, 
plantar los vegetales, las frutas, eh, flores, um, y, y es algo para que ellos aprendan también. Um, I have children, I think it's so important for them to be able to see how you grow your own fruits and veggies and flowers, um, and it's something that um, they and I can work on as well. Y quiero darle las gracias por, por tomarnos en cuenta como ciudadana de aquí de New Brunswick y, y darle las gracias a todos por la oportunidad que nos brindan de, de poder participar dentro de la comunidad. Gracias. Good evening, once again, Charles Crabfield in Brunswick. Questions about several items on the resolutions. Uh, let's start with number nine. This is the appointment of a uh, council, special council for the ethics board. Can you tell me um, why is a special council necessary? Well, I could be wrong, but I believe that uh, Mr. Mignola is stepping aside. Uh, and you're replacing him with uh, Mr. Parkin, is that correct? Well, that's correct, Mr. Council President. This, there's another matter pending before the ethics board that has to be dealt with. And Mr. Parkin is now trying to be the ethics board attorney going forward to handle the new matter. Thank you, Chair. So, uh, was, was Mr. Vignolo, um, was his, his work not sufficient? Is that why he's being replaced? Uh, I'm going to handle the first one because of me having worked in the past with Ben Butte and because of that closeness we thought it better to have outside counsel. The same thing really applies here. Ms. Gaden is one of the respondents in this ethics matter and because of our close relationship we thought it was better to have somebody outside handle the matter rather than in house. Thank you. Okay, makes perfect sense. Uh, can you just tell me though um, why Mr. Clark in this time instead of Mr. Vignolo? Was the uh, city not happy with Mr. Vignolo's work? That he did, did a great job, no? I, I, I'm not sure. I, I think Mr. Vignolo's going away. Yeah. Mr. Vignolo doesn't have availability of time to handle the matter and uh, the elected to engage Mr. Clarkin so that not to delay the matter any further. Thank you, Mr. Shannon. Right. And so it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that Mr. Vignolo is a former law partner with uh, one of the other defendants, Mr. Hoffman? Well, that, that, is, that is also true. They don't work together now, but that would be a potential conflict. But the reason uh, being is Mr. Vignolo um, has nothing to add relative to uh, there being a problem, you could have gone forward, but for the conflict, but the availability issue is, is paramount as well, and not being able to attend to the matter. So that, there's there's two reasons, I guess, if you yeah. want to say that. Thank you. Okay. Can you tell me the name of the firm uh, that Mr. Clarkin is a part of? It's, it's Clarkin in Vignola, but not Mr. Anthony Vignola. It's his son who actually is the partner with Mr. Clarkin. There's no conflict there. That's what Mr. Crowder was referring to. Okay, I just want to be clear. So there would have been a conflict if it was Mr. Vignolo, but instead it's his son's law partners who's been chosen. That's correct. <coughs> okay. um, so let's go to number six. What? Number six. Number six. So why is Mr. Vignolo being paid additional money. Did he do such a great job that he deserves a bonus? Uh, hold on, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I can answer that. Yes. The resolution that was initially authorized for Mr. Vignola to represent the ethics board um, had a um, $4,000 uh, not to exceed the authorization. Uh, Mr. Vignola was paid $250 an hour when we initially adopt resolutions. We don't know how much time will be incurred by the attorney handling the matter. In this particular case, unfortunately, Mr. Vignola spent um, more time than we anticipated. Therefore, 
His total bill is $5,812.50, requiring us to come back to council for additional authorization to get him paid. So that's what this is. Thank you. Well, uh, I'd like to raise a concern about paying more money for this man's service. Um, in case you're not aware, uh, Mr. Vignolo did an absolutely terrible job handling this case. He uh, told the board members incorrect information. He failed to make a proper record of the hearing, as has been discussed at prior, prior council meetings. Um, he's now taken the extraordinary step Sorry, something funny? No? Okay. He took the extraordinary step of subpoenaing myself and the New Brunswick Today newspaper to force us to hand over our video recordings of the hearing that he forgot to properly document. He lied and said that there was an audio recording made. Was there an audio recording made? I don't know. Is there an audio recording? I don't, I don't know. I believe so. We believe so. There was an audio recording made. I have to check. Then, then why does he need to subpoena my videos? You're going to have to ask him that. I, mean, we, I don't know that answer. Mr. Mr. Well, you're paying him for his work here. He charges $250 an hour. He wrote that subpoena to me. I'm asking questions about that subpoena. Why, why, why was it necessary for him to... to force a newspaper to turn over their videos. Mr. Oh. Council President, first of all, I wasn't involved in the hearing. I wasn't there. I don't, I don't know exactly um, Mr. Vignolo's thinking, but I would imagine if he learned subsequent to the hearing that there was a video of actual video footage and audio that existed, perhaps he wanted to obtain that to preserve the record in more detail. Um, in case there would be an appeal. Now, um, I understand Mr. Cradical was the actual complainant in the matter and didn't cover the matter as a reporter, so I'm not quite sure what he's talking about in that context, but I'm sure Mr. Vignolo and Mr. Cradical will work out the issue with the subpoena. I'm not fully okay. aware of what's going on Thank in that regard. So I, I need to know now because the, uh, the, the date I've been subpoenaed to appear in this room is tomorrow. So, uh, will Mr. Vignolo be here? Will Mr. Clarkin be here? Will they both be here? Mr. Clarkin will be here. I don't think Mr. Vignolo will be here. I believe he's out of state, but uh, Mr. Clarkin will be here. And what I would suggest um, to Mr. Craddeville is that he address the subpoena issue with Mr. Clarkin at that time, who represents the Ethics Board. Um, and the Ethics Board has the power to issue the subpoena, which apparently they did. So that issue, I, I suspect, can be uh, disposed of at that time. Thank you. So I have another uh, obligation, uh, another, another engagement tomorrow night. What happens if I don't show up? What happens if you don't show up? Right. Uh, does that, I don't know that answer. Does that really happen? Yeah. Apparently, uh, I've just been told by Mr. Hamilton that Mr. Cradical has counsel, and a letter was sent regarding the subpoena. So now I hear that. I'm sure that your counsel and um, Mr. Clark can, will resolve that if Mr. Cradical is unavailable to attend. Okay. Thank you. So what happens if I don't show up tomorrow? Yes, the board. I, I, this, is, this is a matter before the ethics board. I have no idea what will happen if you don't show up tomorrow, Mr. Cradical. I'm not on the ethics board. We don't control the ethics board. So I couldn't tell you what's going to happen. It sounds like what he was doing. What I would suggest is Mr. Cradwell's counsel, now that he's going to ask counsel, should call Mr. Clark in the morning and discuss that if he can't make it tomorrow night. I'm sure they could work it out. I just think it's strange that now you've switched attorneys on me. Is that, I mean, Mr. Clark has not. Is he up to speed on this issue? Is this an issue that he's responsible for? Under this, it says he's taking care of the, the other matter. Yeah, but he's the board attorney, the ethics board attorney going forward, and I'm sure he's more than prepared to handle any matters that come before the ethics board. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm confident in that regard. Okay. Well, again, I would urge the board to vote no, or at least abstain on item six. Mr. Vignolo disgraced the position. He did a very poor job. 
And uh, I'm glad he's not being hired for the next case, but you should not pay him additional money to subpoena me. Uh, that is a joke. He, uh, the case has been resolved. Uh, so uh, I, quite frankly, um, if, if someone had asked nicely if I could share my videos with the ethics board to supplement the record, I would be happy to do that. But I damn well am not going to do it under a subpoena. Uh -huh. Okay, what else you got, Mr. Cotton? Any other uh, resolutions? Um, maybe a little less exciting. I want to ask about the MemCore membrane filtration system. What number is that, sir? 13. Why is it necessary to read it? Uh, no one bid on the first uh, uh, time around. We're looking for an annual contract to um, provide technical support on the uh, men membrane side of the uh, filtration plant. Thank you. Yeah. And isn't this one of the, the types of uh, contracts where typically there'd only be one one bidder? Like a, it's like a proprietary type thing. Why didn't they bid? Can't explain it. But your, your, your first part of your question is correct. It is very close to being proprietary. Okay, so if it's rebid, is there is hopefully they'll they'll bid. That is our uh, expectation. Yes. Okay. And who is the, the usual suspect there? Is it Siemens? Siemens has now changed their name to Avoqua, I believe. But it is typically a, the, the membrane um, technology comes out of Siemens initially. Okay. And so, is there currently anyone providing those services for the city, or? Are we in danger of not, not just, having someone? Just on a um, as-needed basis, we would like a more annual relationship with uh, Evoqua. Okay. Um, number 30, water main break and the next water main break. Can I just get some information on these water main breaks? And one of them seems pretty huge, $51,000 to repair. Um, when were these water main breaks? And uh, you know, what, uh, why did we go with this particular company to, to uh, clean it up? This is the company that we um, award a contract to by bid every year. Um, we uh, went out to bid, I think, late in 2014 or early 2015. BMW was the successful bidder. They're out of South River. Um, I can speak to the um, Sedan Street break that occurred on January 16th and 17th. They, it took them two days to repair that uh, break. It's a 30-inch roll water uh, main that comes from the pump station at the BNR Canal. It takes roll water up to the pump station, or excuse me, the treatment plant. Um, they had, it took them two days to uh, make the repair. 92 labor hours were put in. Laborer hours, I should say. 25 and a half supervisor hours. They had dump trucks, excavators, pumps. They had a backfill. Uh, the trench was stone. They, they made the uh, asphalt patch. It was a 30-inch uh, pipe. Uh, requires a very, very deep excavation. And uh, this was a costly one. The one on... on um, uh, Commercial Avenue, I don't have the date in front of me. That occurred before January 16th. There was a break. Um, you know the location. Um, our troops could not get to that. They were making other repairs, and this, again, was a deeper excavation. Of course, this, as you can see, was done in less hours than uh, item 31 was. Thank you. So I'll, I'll, I'll just conclude by, by saying, please, if you support ethics and an ethical city government, do not vote to pay Mr. Brignola more money. Uh, he's an unethical ethics attorney. Anybody else on resolutions? On the resolutions only. Seeing that? Move the resolutions. Second. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Escobar? I'm um, abstaining from resolution 540, 509, and 506. So noted. Council Vice President Fleming. Yes. Council Member Anderson. I'm sorry, Council Member Garlotti. Aye. And Council President Egan. Yes. Now we move to the public portion of the meeting. Anybody would like to address the council? You have five minutes to come and address the council. Please stay in the address. Can you come up? I'm Mayor and Fellowship Dad.
Um, at numerous council meetings, I clearly identified serious issues and problems with the community liaison and hearing process. And I made formal complaints asking the council to address these issues and problems and take corrective or remedial action. And I provided formal recommendations to the council to which uh, former council president Escobar stated the council was, was reviewed. Um, since ample time has passed, please explain what is the status of that review of my complaints. Mr. Shannon, Mr. Council President, um, I, I believe, and I, and I may not be correct, but I believe Mr. Shabazz is referring to the complaint he filed against Ms. Gaden and Judge Hoffman. And if that's in fact the case, those particular complaints were sent to the ethics board, and we talked a little bit about that a few minutes ago. Um, the jurisdiction or the proper venue for those uh, types of allegations to be heard is before the ethics board. That's what our ordinance provides, that's what the law provides. So those particular issues will be addressed to the ethics board and uh, discussed by the board. Right. The other, uh, and, I, and that particular hearing is tomorrow night in case the council um, was not aware. Um, I know Mr. Shabazz also is involved in litigation with the city of New Brunswick, so I don't want to speak um, in detail about any of perhaps what Mr. Shabazz wants to speak about his allegations uh, regarding um, the community liaison or the process because my understanding and I reviewed those, those particular pleadings, those are his allegations in the litigation and it's not proper for us to discuss matters of litigation um, for the council and the public like this. Thank you. Uh, just to correct uh, him, Number one, the complaints I filed were multiple complaints. I filed like three different complaints. It was Mr. Hamilton who then stated that my complaints needed to go before the ethics board. But I did not request a uh, any, any uh, sort of hearing before the ethics board. I did not make any complaints to the ethics board. I made my complaints to the city council. We clearly established that the council established the community liaison office, therefore had the authority to discipline their community liaison officer. My complaints were about Ms. Gaten violating the community liaison protocols. In that complaint, I also identified that as being a violation of ethics, as being unethical conduct. But I at no time filed a complaint to the ethics board. So I don't know what he's talking about. Mr. Hamilton forwarded my complaints to the ethics board. I didn't file any complaint with the ethics board. Well, the city council did establish the community liaison. The mayor established the community liaison. Isn't it the mayor and the city council well, we who established? We, we just uh, we just uh, we just uh, approved his appointment, but it went for recommendations. Is that if, right? We advised and consented, advise and consented to, the, to the appointment. Well, if you had to consent to it, that means you're part of establishing. Otherwise, he would not need your consent. Well, we consented to it. But right, which means you helped to establish it, which means you had the authority to discipline your officer. No, we don't have the authority to discipline our officer. Well, why don't you? If you establish it's, going that before, it's, it's going before the ethics board right now. That's, that's right, but I didn't file an ethics complaint. I filed a complaint for violating the community liaison protocols. It, if I can, the complaint alleged ethical or unethical conduct. Anytime we see that, that's something in, in our mind, in, in, according to our practice, goes to the ethics board for review and determination. Um, what Mr. Shabazz is referring to, other conduct or procedural violations, I'm sure the ethics board will have an opportunity to hear those when they hear the matter as well. But once you put ethics or unethical conduct into a complaint or an allegation, it goes before the ethics board, and that's the proper place for it to be disposed of. Thank you. Well, I filed three complaints. So the third complaint was the one that included ethics. Prior to that, I only talked about violating the protocols. So the, what happened to those complaints? And former council president Escobar assured me that the council was reviewing it. So how, how did you change up all of a sudden? 
if I may add something. Uh, I, remember, uh, I remember one of the last times that you were here, Mr. Chavez, and, and I was instructed that because there was you have litigation against the city that we couldn't talk a little bit more about that. But I did mention at that time, I don't know if you recall, but I said I stand by my previous um, assertions and my observations about the process. And so that's why we haven't been able to really talk or do anything about it because we have um, a, a case pending with the city. So that's why we haven't been able to do anything. Yes, ma'am. And, I, and, I, and I, was, I was just as before, I still have great respect for you. So nothing I say is addressed to you personally. But what I am saying is you assured me that my complaints were being reviewed and that something would be done after the council reviewed it would be done to address those concerns and issues about that whole process. It's been ample time that has passed. I want to know what's being done to address those concerns and issues about that process. And it was about deliberate willful violations of the community liaison protocol, their own protocol. My initial complaints were about that. It didn't include anything about ethics. But to deliberately violate protocols is unethical, and that's all I was expressing in my third complaint. I didn't at any time request to go before any ethics board. I didn't file a complaint with the ethics board. And from what I just read about the protocols, that's what's supposed to happen. I'm supposed to file a complaint with the city clerk to go before the ethics board and take an oath. I didn't do any of that. So how, how, does this, how has he been able to simply forward it? He's violating the protocols of the ethics board. Mr. Hamilton, what's, what explanation do we have for that? The law, the state statute, says that ethics matters are heard before the ethics board. It was Mr. Shabazz who chose the language to talk about ethical violations. We sent it over there. If he wants to withdraw it, get it off their agenda tomorrow night. But as of right now, it's where it's supposed to be under state statute and under our procedure. What about under the, protocol, the very protocols that was emailed to me today about ethics board's protocol that says how you have to file? I didn't do anything under oath. I didn't submit anything to the city clerk. So how did this become go before the ethics board other than Mr. Hamilton deciding he's going to take it from the city council and send it over to the ethics board so that the city council can't discipline its office? I think the response has been stated already. So Mr. Hamilton violates the, the ethics board's protocols. It hasn't been followed, but you're saying I filed a complaint with the ethics committee when I never had. The protocols have not been followed. So how do you do, how do you how do you justify it? He filed a complaint that under our law goes to the ethics board. And that's the way we handle it. I filed a complaint for violating the community liaison protocols. That language was in there. So how does mentioning ethics of being, un how, do, how does me mentioning unethical conduct change what my complaint was really about? A violation of the protocols. Is that under the same statute? There is no standalone procedure about violating a protocol. And the, the niche that this fits into, when a man says, that there are ethical violations to send it to the ethics board. If he, if he doesn't want to... On my third there, complaint, I filed two other complaints that didn't talk about that. It talked about violation of the protocol. So the council should be addressing that. And I'm waiting for the council to address it when uh, Councilwoman Escobar was the council president. She said it was being addressed. Why isn't it still being addressed? It's violation of the protocols is what I'm talking about. This, this is what I indicated before about pending litigation. I don't have any litigation against Ms. Escobar. He keeps saying, I mean, against Ms. Gabe. There's no litigation against Ms. Gabe. We have against the city of New Brunswick. Right, right. That's, that's correct, right. but not against Ms. Gabe. And, and within the context of his litigation, one of his allegations is that the protocol of the community liaison process was violated. That's incorrect. I tried to file an amended complaint with the federal court where I argued that, and the federal court denied me amending my complaint. So my original complaint is against the officers, not against Ms. Gayden or Mr. Hall. So he's wrong. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, listen, everybody's going to agree or disagree. Right? Going back to what I said before, Mr. Shabazz has litigation against the city. I don't think we should be litigating the case here or creating additional uh, 
issues that could be part and parcel of the litigation that's pending. Okay, thank you. All right, I just one question. Time. Yes, just one question. Uh, are these meetings governed by the Robert Rules of Order? Are these council meetings yes. governed by the Robert Rules of Order? Yes. I just want to make sure I have a clear understanding. I'm about, I'm about to leave, but I want to make sure I have a clear understanding. Under the Robert Rules of Order, um, can't people come back up and speak a second time? That's been, at least that's what I've discovered in my research. Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. But, uh, the, the ordinance that is on that particular topic takes priority over Robert's Rules of, of Order. If there were none, then Robert's Rules of Order can be relied on for that particular concept. But since the city has adopted an ordinance which limits the time frame upon which people could speak, that is what governs this process. Thank you. Okay, and I've seen the ordinance, and the ordinance talks about people being limited to speaking for five minutes. It doesn't say that people can't come back up and speak a second time. Robert Rules of Order does allow that once everybody has spoken for the first time, people can then come up and speak a second time. And there's no ordinance in this one. There is no ordinance in there. This ordinance doesn't, doesn't uh, uh, prohibit that. So we're going to follow the Robert Rules of Order because I have something else to say. So no, 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 that's not a rule. Yes, we are. Well, why, why are we? I thought you just don't, said don't this is going to speak out of turn. We're going to do something to the discretion of the council president if someone's going to speak. What ordinance says that? Mm. There is no. So ordinance. you're making up your own laws as you go no, along? No, I'm not making up my own. Laws. You just, you just, there's no ordinance that, that says it. So you're making up. Your time is up, sir. Right. But I'm thinking, okay. what law says that you can stop me from coming up a second time? What law? The law of me running the meeting. There is no law. <laughs> so, so you're making up your own law. I'm not making up my own law. Well, I'm coming back up the second time. I'm coming back up the second time. Okay, I'm not recognizing you. Bernadette Shabbat, I'm from New Jersey. How is that funny? And, and answer the question. It's not about to be confrontational. I don't want to be confrontational being, either, not, but if there's no law. I'm, I'm trying to give you a fair signal. Okay, here. well then answer it fairly. This, this, this is not the body of which complaints should go to. This is what our attorneys are telling us. I, I understand your frustration, but this is not the body where this. So you don't have to follow the rules, sir? We have an ordinance. And your ordinance doesn't stipulate one time. And if it doesn't say it definitely, then why do you get to choose that that's what you want to do? Why is it for you to decide what's best for the people? If you don't have an answer, just say just, you just want to do what you want to do. Just tell the truth and we can move on. I, I am telling the truth. Which is what? I believe it's at the discretion of the council president on how the meeting goes and who can get up and speak again and who not to speak again. And is that your belief is nothing in writing? Listen, if you're going to make <laughs> accusations at me, I'm going to have you leave the room, Mr. Crabble. So don't sit there and give me that, all right? You too, Mr. Pittman. What did I do? You, you, what did you do? You just went like this. I mean, you know. Right. I, mean, I, I said thumbs down because I don't like what you're saying. Okay, thank you. Thumbs down. This is still America. He can do that. Listen, go ahead, Mr. Bass. That's what you were answering. I'm, I'm done. So, go ahead. Yeah, got the wrong one. so my question is, um, if there's no law, uh, no law or rule that says that we can only speak once, you you can make up your own rules as a president. <coughs> if I if I can, the ordinance is quite clear. 2.08.150. It specifically states that the <coughs> member of the public shall limit his or her statement to five minutes unless further time is granted by the council. That's the interpretation. The interpretation of that, from my perspective, from the law department's perspective, as advised council, is that everyone can speak for five minutes. And that's the protocol that the council has followed. Five minutes on an ordinance, five minutes on a resolution, and five minutes during the public portion of the meeting. That's what it says. And it does say in there that you have the discretion as the council to grant more time. I think, That's we're, the I think we're playing with language here because to grant more, him having the discretion to grant more time would would common sense tells me that that means during after once that five minutes is up, it still doesn't address the second time or third time option. But um, I know you're going to do what you want to do, um, so you might want to clear that ordinance up. Moving forward, I don't have litigation against the city of New Brunswick, so I would like to know, because I had concerns about the internal affairs uh, process with the community liaison and officer um, Hoffman. 
So what has the council done about the concerns that I had with regards to Ms. Gaiman and how she was biased? Um, what has the council done with all the concerns and complaints that people other than Mr. Shabazz had? What changes have been made? moving forward because other people are going to go through this process. It was admitted that there were flaws and there were mistakes. So what have you done to improve it? What have you done to improve the ethics board? No, what have the, the council liaison. done? Yes, sir. The community liaison. I don't believe we have done anything. Why not? We made, I made many concerns uh, Timothy McDougall addressed this council with concerns about the process. Other people, in addition to Mr. Shabazz and his, his federal lawsuit, made concerns. And that was one of my concerns, because I was wasting my time coming here begging you people to give us justice and do something about your flawed system. And you sit here and you tell me the truth, which I appreciate, but you did nothing. You're inco incompetent. Why would you not do anything when we have these concerns? Why would you not care as a council who's supposed to be here for the people and address our concerns and make things better? Why would you not care enough to do anything? I don't think we, I don't think so. we don't care. I don't think we believe it's in our jurisdiction to do anything. What, what's not in your jurisdiction, sir? We believe that this matter, now that there's litigation, our attorneys are telling us that this matter should go before the ethics. Mr. Shabazz's matter, correct? But when, we, when you sit here in a meeting, and I'm, and I'm speaking, and I'm sharing with you about what internal affairs did not do and how they were negligent in Mr. McDougall's case, and Ms. Gaiden blurts out, oh, that's what you want us to do. And then I lost my composure because I had had it with her. You didn't see that as unethical when she asked me, what do I want them to do? She put herself in the group with the city. She was supposed to be in a position as a community liaison, but she said, oh, that's what you want us to do. At the mere mention that the internal affairs was negligent in interviewing Mr. McDougall's witnesses, which they were. That was fact. It wasn't something that I was insinuating. It was a fact. He had witnesses they weren't interviewed. She was the only one. As an attorney, that's how she responded. Her loyalty to the city is as an attorney, not a community liaison. And if you don't have anything else to go on, you should go on that fact that she was biased. She couldn't even keep her composure. She said, that's what you want us to say. I didn't want her to say anything. I wanted her to be neutral. I wanted her to be for the people and for the city neutrally. But she was not. The mere mention of internal affairs being negligent upset her. It infuriated her. How is she confident to carry that position when she showed a bias? And you mean to tell me after that meeting? I have never disrespected anybody on this council, and I've always kept my composure, and she made me lose it that day. And you didn't see that or care enough to remember to look at it and say, well, why did she act like that? I didn't say she was negligent. I said internal affairs was negligent. Why is she getting her panties in a bunch about what they did? Because as an attorney, she knows that them being negligent means something for the city of New Brunswick, and she responded as an attorney and not a community liaison. And you should do something. I'll be back in two weeks, and I would like to know what you did. Hi, yes, my name is Danielle Moore. I'm from 188 Walker Street. I was here about four weeks ago complaining, making complaints to you about snow removal and the flooding going along the avenue. That's where at the time, as, uh, excuse me, Councilor Escobar said, oh my, I don't have any proof. We can't, what do you expect us to do? What did he say that? Oh, 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 believe me, yes you did. You can look at the other video. You, it, it felt good for you to finally say I didn't have no proof of proving what I'm saying. But I'm here today, I, I mentioned to you about with the church on Livingston Avenue between Delavan and Sanford with their property. What, once again, with the kids where they can't go buy sheets of ice, I mentioned to you the, uh, the apartment complex on Lee and Sanford where you have ice where they still don't do no snow removal. 
If you want to know about clean, this is when I say clean, when you're a uh, corner of property and you're going around, this is clean like the school. I give what, the Board of Education, the maintenance crew, what a wonderful job they've been doing. But then please, I hope you have these two locations, which I will give you the paper, the pictures to show. I hope you do, do too. we have a big storm coming tonight to make these main two locations clean their property. It's not different where, okay, a house where you have to maybe jump over to one spot, but I'm talking about what, where these properties go around three different blocks, and it's right next to the school, very dangerous. So like I said, I hope you do take action due to where I have the pictures of everything that I'm going to prove today. Then also, that's why I mentioned to you about uh, Lee Avenue being puddles of lake of water, like a lake on every corner where the kids either have to walk into a puddle of water or walk in the middle of the street. I mean, do you, do you really see what I'm saying? Why should our children or anyone have to keep walking in the middle of the street due to where the city is not plowing the roads correctly to let the water go by? When it's slush. Okay, you know it's a mountain. Why won't the plow just come, a small plow come through, push the slush out the way so the water can go down into to the water drains? Come on, this looks like a river on each corner where we cannot pass, like I said, starting from Lee Avenue to Rucker Street. So please, I hope you do t tell the city to take action of what I'm really saying, to cross the street, or do we have to keep walking down the middle of the street? It may be going now due to where the temperature has rise to melt it, but like I said, due to where we have another big storm coming, what it's going to melt. Please, I hope you have the guys out there to do the right thing. Like I said, pictures to prove this time, uh, Councillor Escobar, to show you where you said I didn't have proof last time. Come on. So please, like I said, you can have the pictures of what I'm saying. I hope you take action and make it right, please, so we don't have to walk in the middle of the streets. And then also one more thing I would like to ask you, which I have proof, Councillor Escobar, is will you please switch the lights, the light switch for Livingston and Sanford, where it's broken, if you can please fix the light switch. Do you see, see proof that I have that it's broken, okay? So please, like I said, take the address of that? That's Livingston Avenue and Sanford Street, where it's broke, where you cannot press the button to walk across the street. So like I said, due to where I have proof of everything that I said, I hope you take action with it. And then my next situation, that's with the security system, as far as EMS, Fire department, um, police, what is, what is the situation going to be with all these new locations, not just new ones, any building that has a security system where, okay, they say you have a code, but does each EMS, each police officer, does each fire crew know every code to get in a building? Senior citizen? What? Any, what, any security building? How, how does that go? Because I've seen it quite a few times with senior citizen, even the building that I'm, I'm in. Wow, like I said, it's good to have security, but wow, too much security can cost you your life. Well, I think we discussed that last meeting that Director Wall said that they try to get the security system from the from the from the owners of the property. But if it's, I believe Mr. Shammy said if it's a private owned property that they're, I don't know if they're under any obligation or, or to do to notify anybody. No, no, what I'm saying, it, it's where, uh, that's what Mr. Ross told me too, where, okay, so security code, each student has, but what I'm saying, that, uh, does each firefighter, each EMS, is each police officer able to remember each location? Mr. Director, I'm sorry. For the fire department, we have knox boxes on the buildings. The deputy chief carries it keys to the Knox boxes in his car. So they take the keys out of the Knox box, which allows us to get into the building. For some of the newer high rises, they've actually set up fire uh, systems where we go into that room and pull out the keys and stuff we need to get into the location we need to get into. Okay, so is, is this, uh
legal or illegal for them for uh, Fulton Gardens, I believe that's on the cor cor uh, corner of Remsen and Rutgers. Is it is it okay for them to put a chain around their their gate? Due to where I was, I was told that okay, that gate is supposed to open from sirens. Because, it, excuse me, if you're going to answer, if you want to be heard, please stand up. You know the answer. It opens with the sirens yeah. on the Remsen Avenue side. Well, okay. On the Commercial Avenue side, it, it's open with the gate over there. So. Well, okay, as of now, for the past two weeks or so. It's not chained, though. That chain is not there. It oh, opens. I'm telling you now. I know the chain is there, but the gate opens. We already checked that out. It, 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 well, how, how, how can you open it if there's it a It goes off the siren. Huh? The chain goes yeah. off to. The one side opens, one gate opens up. Well, maybe you are uh, nothing. Uh, I, I see. I know that. The chief went out there and they tested it. There was a complaint made about that. that well, was tested a couple weeks ago, and that chain was there. And, 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 and I'm and I'm right saying there. you as of now, due to where I see that I've seen it, due to where, like I said, they weren't able to get in through this side, due to where it says this entrance for Fulton Square is closed. Please use Commercial Avenue entrance, where, like I said, there's a big chain on it now. That no. I don't see what are you saying, how the fire department can get through there if there's a big chain on it. And it's telling you do not come this way. He just said it opens on the side. The chain. The chain. I was there the other day, not looking at that, there's something on the boulder. And the chain looks like it's wrapped around the center column and on the one side of the gate. The other gate opens off of the, off of the I'll check it out, we'll check it out tomorrow. Okay. All right. okay. okay. Please don't check me. Yeah, I mean, it's a concern, but uh, about a couple weeks ago, the Lieutenant Stella tested it out, and it did open. Oh, okay, I take your word, but yeah. uh, uh, okay. Okay, thank you. Oh, here you go. You can have the pictures of every proof that I said, uh, Councilor Escobar. Thank you, Mr. Well, sir, if Mr. Melkin, he's not going to see the shoes and the jersey. Real quick, I just want to um, go uh, piggyback off the community liaison issue. There's a lot of um, hearings that took place. I brought a lot of people to the community liaison, and there was supposed to be as a uh, protocol that's supposed to be transcribed. And I wanted to know. Most hearings that took place thus far weren't transcribed, and I want to know if the ones that are coming up in the near future, will they be transcribed for record, record purpose? Uh, I'm not aware of any uh, hearing scheduled in the future. Uh, they were recorded in the past yep. transcribed. I suspect they will be in the future. With the, uh, two, with the ethics board. The ethics board? Yeah. The ethics board? 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 The ethics The ethics There will be a core reporter there, Mr. Pickett. Okay. Um, also, can I have an update on um, Andrew Jackson's um, alleged death? I mean, well, Andrew Jackson's death that we discussed. Captain Miller said he would have more information for yes. this meeting. Captain Miller? I sent a letter to the council. I'm not fully aware. Um, we checked our system. There was no calls about Andrew Jackson. Uh, we contacted Robert Wood Johnson Hospital. They could confirm that um, he did pass away in the hospital, um, but there was no nothing suspicious that would raise their attention to notify the police or the medical examiner. Under HIPAA laws, they can't release anything else. They did advise that if Mr. Jackson's next of kin or immediate family wants more information, that they can make applications to the hospital for information, but it's not something they can release to the police department or anyone else that just wants to know because they want to know. Thank you, Captain. So that's all that can be done? I just told you, you could, if you have, this, I know you've uh, indicated you're a family member. I don't know if you're next of kin or not, but if you notify the next of kin, they can get all of the medical records and we'll know exactly what happens in this okay. As a captain of the police department, he's telling me that I should notify the next of kin. Why, why shouldn't he do that? If, this, if there's a possibility that this man could have been murdered, he's saying that if I, if I, been, I should notify the next of kin. Well, he, what he's saying is that when, he, when I believe when he died at the hospital, there was no suspicion, so the police were not notified. Am I correct? correct. There's, there's so no there was no involved. suspicion of anything wrong with his death as far as murder or anything like that, because then I believe the police would have been notified. So with that, anybody that wants to know anything more about his death, according to the HIPAA law, uh, laws, it has to be a next of kin or someone that uh, has the right to get that information. Okay, so you mean to tell me that a law enforcement agent can't get that no. information? No. No. Okay. All right. All right. Um, we also looked a lot of discussion on ordinances. You know, I was a victim of uh, a police officer not knowing the proper ordinance.
and that resulted in me getting a ticket. And now I see that the whole the entire public is a victim of you guys not knowing the ordinance. So that's why a lot of discrepancy came into play as far as the five minute rule. Now you have resistance, even though you don't know the ordinance totally, you're gonna to disagree with it. Now my question is, why do you disagree with the public coming up, speaking and addressing their concerns if you're for the people? Not for the people. The ordinance simply states what it says. It's up to the discretion of the council if anybody's going to speak for an additional time. It's right there in black and white. This ordinance has been in, in how long, when, when was the ordinance adopted? Mr. Shannon, at least 25 years ago, I think. Before I, but we're, this, we're, this we're, 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 talking, we're talking about a second time. It, it, it's the same thing. It's, you, can, you, can, you can look at the ordinance any way you want. If there's anybody to speak again, it's up to the discretion of the council. And that's what I was trying to say before. It's up to the discretion of the council. So if somebody's going to be allowed to speak again or to speak additional time, it's going to be up to the discretion of the council, just like it says in the ordinance. Don't say that. Okay. Well, um, in the near future, you know, um, the, the, the process of you, you just, your, just your resistance alone tells me, it explains in red, you're not for the people. You're not, you're, not for the, you're not for the people because you don't want valid concerns. I, you know, I've been coming here for years, right? And I've been addressing all sorts of concerns. And I sit back, I watch the crowd. I watch, what I do is I'll give you a little secret about me, right? There's a lot of people in here, I pay attention. When I, when I go back and watch this on TV, I don't look at you guys, I look at these faces right here. And I watch how people, you know, even now they text each other. Right now as I'm talking, they're texting each other amongst each other. I watch the craftiness of this. And then when I, and people who think I walk around town and not know who they are, I do my homework. I got to know the devil do in order to defeat him. I pay attention to the ones that are in the cut and picking their eyes around. That's what I focus on. And, you know, you guys put people in positions for neglect. I honestly think Ms. Gating was put in this position to neglect the public. Now, this is another, there's another community liaison position that was given to Officer Scott Gould, who's in the back. He's a, he's a, I want to know what position does he currently have in the city of New Brunswick. Is, is he still community liaison? Yes. Oh, sorry, William Brunswick. Yeah, I'm currently in charge of auxiliary. I'm currently in the middle school and the high school, and as well as uh, uh, attending on the community outreach meetings, uh, second board. That's, that's my capacity. So I basically, I have multiple hats to answer your question. I'm in the middle school, I'm in the high school, I'm in charge of auxiliary, as well as the crime watches. Thank you, sir. Okay, um, that's my example. You know, that's an example. You know, it was a setup. I knew he was going to stand up. I know he was going to do that and, you know, throw his uh, resume online about how he's a community liaison. But me personally, my personal knowledge of this officer, who I know him to be, this was the officer that the anti crime unit, who was ran under the leadership of Paul Schuster, <coughs> they were, uh, there will be five officers, predominantly white, Europe, Amer Europe Americans. What they will do is, they would patrol all the inner city streets where you know most blacks be, and he most of the time he was the only black in the vehicle. What his sole job was as community, and including what all the other accolades he do, and he can't say that because I'm telling you what I know for a fact, what I've seen with my own eyes. What he would do is jump out of the van, beat one a black man down to a pole, while his white while his white office coat colleagues sat back and watched. And after he beat them down to a pole, what they would do was put handcuffs on. Them. Because he was a strong, he's a strong, he was a strong mule. So he had the strength to tackle people down. I've seen him slam people on their head. I've seen him knock people out unconscious. And now he becomes a community liaison. That's the process you use. You use ineffective people in certain positions. Now he can't stand, I guarantee you, he cannot stand up and tell me what my eyes saw. Now you got him talking to kids in schools. You got him going to outreach programs. And you got him mentoring our youth. When he, when, he, he would, when he would knock people on the cot, that was his sole job, was let the black guy beat the black guy down like a pole so they won't say it's racial discrimination. That's the job he had on the anti crime unit under the leadership of Paul Schuster, a German whose whole job was to lock every black man he could get ha his hands on. This is the process that the city supports? No? Yes? You got a maniac talking to children? My time is up. My five minutes is up. Thank you.
Good evening once again. Charles Pratt of New Brunswick. Uh, I, I do want to point out that uh, the ordinance is silent on whether people can speak a second time, and as a matter of fact, this is the fourth time I'm speaking tonight. Um, the same law, they say this law that's on the books that, that says that you cannot let people speak for a second time. Was it on the books last year? Mr. Crackle, the ordinance speaks for itself. You can interpret it how any way you want to interpret it. Okay? It's up to the discretion of the council. After your five minutes is up, you can speak again or not. You can interpret it your way. We'll interpret it our way. Okay. Well, I agree with the folks who said that you're interpreting it purposely in a way to limit public comment. So you can go home early. And I don't think that's right or fair. Um, I think that you should stay here. And if I were on the council, I would stay here uh, to hear all the people have to say. Um, I'll start with a few questions. It came up at the last meeting that uh, a citizen, a, a resident of New Brunswick, was hit by a city dump truck on February 10th of last year. Um, we had heard previously the opposite was true. But actually, it was true. And can you just tell me why that um, complaint is not necessarily going to be paid out by the Joint Insurance Fund? Who, who can you speak on that? Mr. Lockman? Uh, the Joint Insurance Fund is defending the interests of the city. Um, I don't, um, I had double checked with them a couple weeks ago. and. Um, drawing a blank at the moment, but they are defending our interest in the case. They, there was a gentleman who made a complaint that he was hit by a vehicle. Our, well, our driver insists that he was not. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. There's a pending litigation yes. right now. There's yes. pending litigation. We cannot I speak about it at this time, Mr. Bradley. Okay. Um, so just a taste of the serious corruption here is that the uh, there were problems with the water that were covered up, that an individual who worked for the city um, failed to report them to the government and to the public uh, in accordance with the laws. The city has been levied a fine of $355,000 for this. And in exchange, uh, instead of paying the fine, they want to do a supplemental environmental project. Can you tell me what could possibly make up for that? We propose a, um, a supplemental environmental project uh, that would prevent uh, turbid water entering the canal, the same canal that we draw the raw water out of. We have proposed it to the DEP. They have not approved it yet. Um, they may not approve it. We are having an um, ongoing dialogue with them about that. Thank you. How would it work? How would it work? How would what work? The, 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 the improvement? To keep the turbid water out. Uh, raise the level of a weir uh, that is situated uh, off of Easton Avenue in Somerset. Okay. Um, I need to uh, speak about the ethics board. I want to thank Councilwoman Escobar for abstaining on uh, the item with Mr. Vignolo, as I had requested. Um, these remarks are for, for the other council members, and I, I just want to say that um, you're now a part, if you weren't already, of a criminal syndicate. And no, it, you are. Um, and and I'll be honest. When Mr. Mignola was appointed, I asked if anybody knew him, and you said that he was your your baseball coach when you were a kid. And I would suggest that in the future, when you're hiring someone for such an important job, there's got to be a higher standard than him being a good Little League baseball coach. When Reverend Hooper was appointed to serve on the ethics board, um, basically no, said people couldn't even tell me what church he was a, a preacher at. Uh, people didn't know much about him, but they said the mayor thinks he's good, so we think he's good. Uh, are you happy with his service so far? Okay, well I can tell you that there have only been four meetings since he was appointed. He has not sworn in. He has not taken the oath of office. He missed two of the meetings. He was a half hour late to one of the other meetings, and he did not take part in the vote on the hearing. Are you satisfied with that appointment? Sorry. 
I don't think any of us were in the room when the vote was taken. I know I wasn't. And for a disappointed litigant to come in here and complain about the procedure and the people who participated in it, I just think it's unseen. I think you have to weigh the truthfulness of what he's saying. I think he has his own self-interest that is apparent by, by what he's saying. Let me tell you what I think is unseemly. Um, I've been told that there's never been a hearing of the Ethics Board. There's no record of it. That's a lie. Can you tell me, Mr. Hamilton, because Mr. Hamilton was there, can you ask Mr. Hamilton whether there was a hearing about Joseph Shrum and his ethics violations in 2002? Mr. Hamilton? There was no hearing. There was a review, as the ordinance requires, and the board decided that it did not require a hearing, and they didn't have a hearing. And Mr. Wright then took an appeal to the local finance board and abandoned it on the day it was scheduled to be heard. But there was no hearing. Was there a hearing against Mayor Lynch for his ethics violations in 1986 and in 1990? There was a protracted hearing, but not under this <coughs> So then when I asked if there's ever been a hearing, why wasn't I told that? Because it was not under this ordinance, which is the procedure that we are operating under, have been since after the exact year. Well, I would humbly suggest you're not operating any procedures because you don't follow the ones that you have. Um, Mr. Vignolo, again, failed to have a court reporter present at the hearing against Mr. Puka. And that fits a pattern, an alarming pattern. Mr. Shabazz mentioned that in his matter at the community liaison where I was present for, it was supposed to be audio recorded, and the recording was supposed to be given to the police director, and we learned that didn't happen. We learned the same thing happened in Mr. McDougall's case, and we even had a crazy argument made by the assistant city attorney that, oh, well, that's because it was in a courtroom. The normal thing in a courtroom is to record it. Those recording devices were purposely turned off. And I would suggest the pattern is that you don't want to keep records of your own hearings. The ethics hearings and these matters of uh, police misconduct ought to be recorded. Just ask any expert on how, how to conduct uh, an investigation, whether you should record the hearing or not. Um, Mr. Vignola also didn't allow procedural objections. He badgered witnesses. He gave the board incorrect advice that Mr. Hamilton himself disagreed with. He told the board that four votes were required to be uh, uh, guilty, or I'm sorry, three were required to be guilty, where Mr. Hamilton said four, and he has done a disservice, as has Reverend Hooper, and you need to do better with your appointments to this ethics board. The corruption tomorrow night will be here in City Hall at 7 p.m. and across the street at the Middlesex County Freeholders. We're going to keep covering this on NewBrunswickToday.com, and I want people to go and check it. Keep checking it, because you're going to learn things. You already asked, you already asked my questions, so I don't need to go. You and Mr. Second. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council Member Garlotti? Aye. Council President Eagle? Yes.